This is a demonstration video showing how an attacker can steal a victim's config file in order to intercept their messages and make calls on their behalf. On the screen in the middle, we have a Wi-Fi access point run by the attacker. On the right, we see the victim's device looking for an internet connection. The victim connects to the internet through the malicious access point, and after a few seconds, the victim starts browsing the internet. And done. The attack is complete. But it might have been so quick that many might not have fully caught what happened there. Once the victim is connected to the malicious access point, they begin browsing a website via HTTP. The access point fetches the content that the victim has requested, but injects a malicious JavaScript payload. The victim is redirected to a relevant RCS config service subdomain, and the altered content is returned to the victim's browser. After the malicious JavaScript is loaded into the context of the RCS config service subdomain, the access point disconnects the victim from Wi-Fi and forces them to fall back to the LTE network. The JavaScript continues to run in the browser, and once the victim is connected to the LTE network, the connection is abused by the JavaScript to retrieve a token from the RCS config service via HTTP. This token can then be used to retrieve the sensitive config file by resubmitting it via HTTPS. In the attack, the token, represented by the J session ID cookie, which is partially masked here, is sent to a server controlled by the attacker that is reachable from the internet on the left. The malicious backend is then able to retrieve the config file by presenting the token to the RCS config service via HTTPS through its own internet connection. This extra step is necessary because same origin policy prevents the malicious JavaScript served via HTTP from reading HTTPS responses. The attacker has a config file and can examine it. After that, not only can the attacker see the phone number of the victim, but scrolling down are also SIP credentials, also partially masked here, which are used to connect to the SIP core. An attacker with these credentials would be able to connect to the RCS and then do anything on behalf of the victim, including intercepting SMS messages and making calls on their behalf.